Hey, Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. Hey, everyone, Matt DiNapoli here. Welcome to episode 164 of Snack Minute. Uh, this week, we have our good friend, Joe Clark, back uh, to, talk to, us, uh, talk to us about AI for network engineers. Um, Joe, for new Snackers, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself, and then we'll jump right into it. Sure. Of course, the old Snackers are probably tired of seeing my face. I am. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Uh, my name is Joe Clark. I'm a distinguished engineer at Cisco, and specifically in our learning at, at, at Cisco Group. Uh, at this rate, at this rate, Joe is about is beating Quinn for the 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 for m- number of times on the show. Yeah, number of times on this episode on the on Snack Minute. We're number one. We're number one. All right, Joe. Um, you're here to talk to us about AI. I think we're all wondering the same thing. Um, about AI actually taking over our jobs in the world. And so can you about. just talk? <laughs> it's not. It really isn't. <laughs> but can you please tell us a little bit about um, what are you doing with AI? Uh, where do you see AI is going? And, and, and in general, like what's, wh- what is it that, for, especially when you, know, if you do a lot of automation, um, where does it, that, what does that play in your, in your day-to-day? Sure. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think AI eats, so it's definitely not going to snack, and it's definitely not going to take your jobs. <laughs> but uh, we did, Cisco ran uh, with some other big companies, Google, IBM, uh, formed a consortium and did this big survey and found that AI is going to have a dramatic impact to network infrastructure engineers. Um, and a lot of things make sense, you know, AI awareness, don't those things are valuable. We're going to need skills in that area. But one of the things that they say are going to be, you'll see less of, is a need for basic program skills. And I, I can imagine people would look at that and immediately start to have, if, that, if that's what you do, programming, start to have a gut reaction. Of, well, no, I'm not going to take my job. Um, but if you think about it, every job has crap that you just don't like to do. I mean, I don't care how much you love your job. There are tedious, monotonous things that you have to do. Talking to Kern. I hate you. And an AI can an AI can help with that. You could have it provide all the all, all the the words you need to spit at Kareem. <laughs> uh, but one of the ways in, in network automation, one of the things. So I love network automation. I love coding. I love being creative. One of the things that AI can help me do that I don't like doing is documentation. So very practically. I had this huge EEM applet that I wrote for uh, automating port configs at IETF meetings. Um, and I was being beaten up by the team because they, we, they call it Joe's magic. Only I knew how it worked. I fed it into chat GPT and said, explain to me the intent of this Cisco EDM applet line by line. And it spit out the document I wanted with a summary at the end of what it was doing. When it also explained every line. I've got a little video I can give you guys to, to show how it did that. I had to tweak it a little bit, but I would say 90% of that document is as is in our document repository now. Great use of the tool. Didn't replace me. Didn't mean I had to do anything less creative, but it gave me something. Um, uh, it, it filled a gap that I needed. And likewise, testing. I don't like to write test cases. This is something where I can feed AI a scenario, I can feed it the intent I want, and then I can iterate with it, thing like CML, until I get test cases that, that really satisfy the intent of what I want to do in the network. I can then focus my time on what is it I'm actually trying to automate. And finally, I wrote a chatbot for um, self-service for at the Cisco Log Europe Not. You can ask it about, like, where is this user? And it'll look them up in the DHCP database. And the way I wrote it was, if regular expression this, do this. If regular expression this, this, or this, do that. Messy. Instead, I can tie that in uh, with an, an, an agent doing a React type of flow uh, where I, I get some data, I talk to an API, I observe what comes back, and then I iterate on that. And now I can have the power of a large language model handle the, na- the, the language recognition, the, the natural language processing, and I can connect it to APIs that talk to Cisco Prime Network Registrar, Active Directory, uh, DNA Spaces, that type of thing. And now I've got something where I didn't really want to deal with the natural language stuff, but I really wanted to connect everything and save time so people aren't interrupting me. 
So those are some things you can think of. Think of AI as another tool like Stack Overflow might have been. Google was early on that can help you be more productive, give you more time to be innovative. Joe, I want you to I want you to touch on something. I mean, this is this is pretty. This is where AI adds value, right? To 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 your day to day, your workflow, and it makes a lot of sense. I want you to touch on something. Perhaps a lot of our snackers are thinking about it. Are you? I don't. I don't believe. I I know you're you're pretty security conscious, and so, um, are you using just the 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 Chat GPT model that's out there for all of that that you're doing? Obviously not. And so what do you do? And can you just drill in a little bit for us and tell us how, how you've implemented what the, the use cases you've talked about? Astute observation. So <laughs> yeah, it's rare. Has Kareem had an astute observation? I can, I can see the look in your eyes there, Matt. I hate you both. What is this, Big Time Kareem Day? Yeah, it is. <laughs> One of the things um, they say will be a higher skill is that AI awareness and specifically responsible AI awareness. Some things like that EBM applet was public. So I could have used the stock chat GPT. If I don't care who can see that data, that might be fine. However, other things, I might have a very sensitive or very um, proprietary set of automation or code or config that I don't want the world to see. I don't want my competitors to be able to pull out. And in that case, that data has a specific gravity to it. Um, and maybe that gravity is so high that I have to either bring the AI models to it, meaning deploy something in-house like a Llama on my own GPUs, or create a private cloud instance of ChatGPT. Very specifically, what I did was use Cisco's own private cloud instance of ChatGPT um, that we host in a private Azure space. So that responsibility, that's critical. You hit, you hit the nail on the head. One of those skills we need to be aware of when we're using AI is where is our data going and what do we do with the outcome? Do we just take the outcome and paste it in or do we look at it? Do we, do we provide that oversight? Both of those things cannot be underestimated when using AI as a tool. And, and that goes to your former point, Joe, about you, they're coming for my jobs. This is where understanding the lower layer activities not necessarily to have to do them. I don't want to write the same code over and over again. I don't want to document my code on my own. Like, I agree with you. Those tasks are definitely something I like to throw out the door to someone else or, and, or to a bot. That would be great. Uh, or that is great. Um, and so, but understanding how those things work um, is required to make sure that the outputs are correct and that we're not just throwing bad information out into the ether. I, I've been kind of playing with the notion that this is very similar to maybe 10, 15 years ago when we were starting to talk about APIs really hardcore. So what we're doing is we're adding an abstraction layer on top of the stack that we already know, um, but we can't forget how those things work below us because otherwise everything is lost eventually. I mean, time will tell. Uh, but, um, you know, to that point, you know, people who are worried of potentially, especially programmers, yeah. um, I think network engineers, I think we still have a longer path to that. But I think those people that have that worry that this is going to overtake their job, no, this is going to make your job easier. This is going to allow you to focus on solving the problem instead of writing the same authorization code over and over again um, and tweaking it for, you know, various languages. So um, I think it's really, it's, it's a fun thing to start to think about. And I really encourage people to spend the time to think about the tool chains and the ramifications and the security uh, aspects to it. Uh, but those are very real things that people need to think about, but it, it won't take your job away. It might change slightly, but it, I don't think, I don't think we're going to see less people, um, you know, writing code. I still think learning how to write code and uh, learning about infrastructure is 100% going to be needed for the foreseeable future. And, and to your point, Matt, it's probably not going to be the engineer. Once the engineers see it, they're like, nah, this won't replace me. But their management might just see the hype. Managers are idiots. <laughs> but if you, to, if, if, if you say you're playing with AI, the more people, more engineers would play with it and then, so, and then go to their management and say, look what I can do now with this. They are suddenly start to see it more as a tool and less as a replacement. Yeah. They're starting the conversation. They're bringing the technology to their leadership to say, 
this is how we need to make use of this. And the leadership then sees them as valuable because they're embracing AI to make, to do more innovation, to bring more value. Um, and I think that's an important way to have that conversation. So use AI to streamline your work and use AI to suck up to your boss. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> a few things that we learned today. That's what I do every day. That's my entire <laughs> job. And having to deal with Kareem. <laughs> you heard it here from Chant J-O-E. Joe, we could probably sit here and talk to you about this for hours and hours on end, but unfortunately, that is all the time we have for this week. Uh, thank you for joining us yet again. Uh, we will have to go back and see how many times Joe's been here versus Quinn for sure. Mm. Snackers, uh, we'll see you next week. I don't think Joe will be here. We don't know yet, though. <laughs> Quinn might be on, too. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Snackers. Thanks.